Hi, this is Scott. Welcome back to another Hollinger Team video blog. Uh, this video is on questions that we get from both buyers and sellers, and it uh, revolves around appraisals. Um, so I have nine different uh, questions or uh, topics that have come up. So first, um, what does an appraiser do? Uh, an appraiser basically is going to visit a property that they're appraising to see the condition, the design, um, the age, uh, a lot of different factors in the property just to familiarize themselves with it so they can compare it to other things that they're going to use in the appraisal process. Um, the one thing that they aren't is they are not home inspectors, so an appraisal is not going to have a, a long list of uh, inspection type items that you would get typically from a home inspection. They are going to, if there is something that's deficient, they will uh, make note of it. The most common one that we see that I, I almost is a guarantee is if you have a stairway and it doesn't have a, a handrail on the stairway, they will make note of that. So will a home inspector, but um, the appraisers will do it. And um, typically uh, in, a, in a loan, it will be a requirement that that appraisal, that the um, hand railing gets installed. Number two, what information does an appraiser compile to do an appraisal? Well, they'll search the uh, tax records they'll, uh, and, and other county records. Um, they will uh, search uh, plat maps and subdivision maps and things like that to familiarize themselves with the area and, and what's there. Um, they will then also, uh, typically they're all uh, members of the multiple list, so they'll be acquiring uh, information from the multiple list as far as sales of properties and use those things along with um, their the inspection that they've done of the property and pick, typically pictures that they've taken also. Uh, and then they'll use that and, and, and incorporate that into their appraisal report. Number three, how do improvements affect uh, the valuation of a property on an appraisal. And the extreme that I would use right off the bat being here in Montana is that if you put a swimming pool in your yard, um, it'll probably cost you a lot of money, but it's not going to necessarily be uh, something that the appraiser is going to give a tremendous amount of value to. Same thing uh, with, uh, oh, just it's, it's like a, if you if you look at a custom home where somebody spent a lot of money doing things that they wanted for their own personal enjoyment um, may not get that dollar for dollar or anywhere near dollar for dollar back on that. Uh, countertops are another example. If you put the most expensive countertop in as opposed to a, a mid-level countertop, it's not necessarily going to deliver a whole bunch of extra in the valuation process. Number four, how are other home sales used in the appraisal process? That's uh, kind of a fine art. Um, and that's basically what, uh, what appraisers are doing is they're, they're, uh, they're, it's, it's not necessarily scientific. It's more of a little bit of an art. Um, but anyhow, the selection of, of comparable sales is uh, sometimes um, one of the critical parts. And sometimes it's homes that are not necessarily close by, but are much more similar um, and have a smaller adjustments made in the evaluation process because uh, lenders will typically look at adjustments that are being made. And if um, the adjustments are too large, they're going to question uh, that, that appraisal process. So um, they try to bring properties anywhere from three to as many as six home sales to compare in an appraisal. Number five is how does appraisal compare to fair market value? And this really is one of those things where it doesn't get uh, talked about very often is, is that when there's a sale of a home, sometimes there's concessions. Sometimes the seller has paid $5,000 towards the buyer's um, uh, loan cost to help, uh, help a buyer be able to afford the loan to uh, purchase the property. Uh, sometimes it's a concession like um, the buyer isn't necessarily going to need the home right away uh, because of a move that's delayed or something like that. And they'll be able to close early and give a, a seller maybe 
the ability to say we're there for six months uh, rent free or something like that or for a reduced rent or something. So when there's concessions like that, an appraiser is going to take the value that they arrive at in comparing other properties and then they're going to reduce whatever the values of those concessions are on the final appraised price on a property. So sometimes that has some effect too in, and they'll use that on the comparable sales too. If there's a, a comparable sale out there that's had some concessions, they'll take that and reduce the value of that, that comparable sale that they're using. Number six, what if the appraisal comes in below the sales price? This is always the big fear, but on the other hand, people always want to know if it appraised over the sales price. Um, the appraisals are the property of the buyer and are shared with a lender and uh, are that's all the far that that information can go. The only information we get is um, typically that the appraisal came through and it's fine, which means that it appraised for the sales price or you know, in theory maybe over, but typically um, if they appraise for the purchase price. And if I go all the way back to the first topic of what, or I mean the, the uh, second topic, what information appraisers use, one of the things they have is a copy of a buy sell because um, it's not to unduly influence them. It's just to make sure that we don't have uh, an appraisal that comes in $5,000 under the sales price and then you've got a problem. And that's, um, that's the problem that's created when they come in under the sales price, um, it basically uh, starts a renegotiation and, and it can either be that the buyer walks away or there's a price concession or there's some other creative um, things that are incorporated into the transaction to help bring it to a close. Uh, and we could do a whole video on, on the different things that can be done for low appraisals. Uh, the one thing that's very difficult to do is to go back and talk to the appraiser in some fashion and try and point out some errors or some comparables that weren't used and get them to adjust. That is, um, that's very much paddling upstream and I've only seen uh, maybe once or twice ever where uh, some information was overlooked or some uh, uh, adjustments just weren't done correctly. Number seven, how is an appraiser chosen? Uh, that's changed over the years. It used to be a phone call to an appraiser saying we need to have this appraised for a sale of a, price, a home. Um, but with the recession came a lot of new lending laws and one of them was that there was apparently in parts of the country uh, some uh, relationships between appraisers and uh, buyers, brokers, sellers and um, inflated values and things like that that were created and created a problem. So now the law is that um, appraisers are all assigned appraisal jobs through independent appraisal assignment companies. So uh, when a lender is placing a loan, they call a, an appraisal company and they assign an appraiser to go out and appraise the property. Um, so there's very little uh, interaction anymore between appraisers and anybody else, and lenders, buyers, sellers. Um, about the only time that there's any conversation is when a appraiser uh, calls to schedule uh, being able to go into a property to do the appraiser appraisal. And uh, other than that, it's it's pretty much an isolated task that they do. Second to last question, number eight, is are there good and bad appraisers? And um, I guess I would just have to say yes, because um, again, back to the idea that it's kind of an art form. And if an appraiser is really good at doing, uh, well, let's just say if an artist is very good at doing uh, watercolor and somebody commissions them to do an oil painting, uh, it may not turn out to be as good as their really good watercolors. The same thing with appraisals. If they aren't familiar with the area or the type of property that they're appraising, um, they could have difficulties doing a, a good, strong analysis. Last but not least, can you talk to your appraiser? And I talked about that a little bit earlier. It's pretty difficult, uh, like I said, when they're scheduling a time to go into the property. Um, 
that's that's really about the only time to talk to them. And we simply work to uh, have them uh, accommodated to get in when they need to get in. Uh, we also ask them if they would like us to provide some comparable sales to help make their job easier. Um, also, and then just to make sure that they don't miss an important uh, comparable sale that might uh, help with, with the process. Anyhow, hope those were helpful little uh, uh, topics on appraisals for you. And uh, if you have questions about it, any one of those, be happy to expand on those further. Um, the outro that we have is a uh, set of pictures from the area that uh, I thought you would enjoy a little slideshow of uh, Montana. Thanks a lot for watching another Hollinger Team video blog.